Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a polynomial expression. So we're given that x plus 1 over x is equal to 1 over 5, and we're supposed to evaluate 25x to the fourth power plus 49x squared plus 25. Great, so I'll be presenting at least two methods. There could be a third one. Let's see how that goes. And let's start with the first method. So for my first method, since I'm given an equation, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate x. So I'll find the value of x. x plus 1 over x is equal to 1 over 5. Actually, I already got the solution, so let me go ahead and show you. But before we, get, we look at the solution, I want to say something. If x is a real number, x plus 1 over x is always going to be greater than or equal to 2. Of course, this is true for positive values of x. If x is negative, then you're going to be on the other side of the number line, which is basically less than or equal to negative 2. Now think about it. What makes this equal to 2? x equals 1. And you can definitely write this as a perfect square, so on and so forth. That's a different story. I'm not going to get into the details, but we have that inequality for positive x values. Do we know if x is positive? Could x be negative? Here's the problem. If x is negative, 1 over x is also negative. There is some is supposed to be negative, but as you can see, it's not. So in this case, we can safely say that x must be positive if it's real. Okay, now here's the solutions. Of course, they're not real, so we can't really talk about positivity. But those are the solutions. And what we can do with these is pick one of them, doesn't matter which one, I think, and plug it in. So what are we trying to find? We are given an expression 25x to the fourth power plus 49x squared plus 25. By the way, I just realized I could also be asking for this because, for this I mean, just the x expression, because adding 25 is just going to increase the value. But as it, as it is, uh, it actually gives us a really nice way to approach it. Anyways, I'll save it for uh, later methods. Uh, let's go ahead and just plug it in now. So which one do you want to use? We could go with the second one, which is positive, sort of. There's a plus sign at least. So I can write it as 1 plus 3 root 2, 3, 3 root 11i divided by 10. So that's x. We're going to square it. So we're going to find x squared from here. a plus b squared, uh, we're going to be getting 1. And if you square 3 root 11, you're going to get 99. i squared is negative 1, so that's going to be minus 99 plus 6 root 11i, and that's going to be divided by 100. Great. This is going to give us negative 98 plus 6 root 11i divided by 100, and obviously everything can be divided by 2, so x squared can be written as negative 49 plus 3 root 11i divided by 50. Of course, this is just x squared, and then we're going to find x to the fourth power, so on and so forth, right? And x to the fourth power is just going to be this number squared, but as you can see, we're going to have to deal with very large numbers. So we're probably going to just um, leave this problem here. But I also want to say something else, uh, and that could be the third method, but I'm just probably going to mix these up. Uh, because I just realized uh, we could do this problem in a different way. Anyways, let's just call it second method. So you get the idea, square this, find x to the fourth, and then plug it in, and you'll find the answer. What is the answer going to be? You'll see. Okay, so what about the second method? The second method is going to depend on uh, kind of like a manipulation of this as a polynomial. We are given this, x plus 1 over x is equal to 1 over 5. Let's go ahead and do the following. Try to isolate x squared. Uh, write x squared in terms of x. Multiply everything by x. And then subtract 1. So, so we kind of linearized uh, x squared, as you can see here. And hopefully this is something we can use. But what is x to the fourth power? Of course, you're going to have to square x squared, which is equivalent to squaring this. By the way, that should be a 1, not a minus x. I know that's a mistake. Okay, here we go. We're going to square this. And x to the fourth is just going to be x squared over 25 minus 2x over 5 plus 1. And then, of course, x squared can be replaced with this again. We can keep doing it. And if you do replace it with x over 5 minus 1, 
we're going to have to divide that by 25 and then subtract 2x over 5 from it and plus 1. And then if you make a common denominator, you're going to get x minus 5. So that's going to be x minus 5 over 125, 5 times 25. And here, if you want to make a common denominator, we can multiply this by 25. That's going to give us 50x over 125. And finally, plus 125 over 125. So we can also linearize x to the fourth power this way. And let's go ahead and make a common denominator. x minus 50x is just going to be negative 49x. Minus 5 plus 125, that's going to give you positive 120. And all of that is divided by 125. So that will be equivalent to x to the fourth power. We already have something for x squared, which is x over 5 minus 1. But I could probably write it as x minus 5 over 5 so that I can work with fractions and make common denominators and so on and so forth. Okay, what am I trying to find from here? My goal is to evaluate... 25x to the fourth plus 49x squared plus 25. And then if you go ahead and plug this in, multiply this by 25. Let's see, negative 49x plus 120 divided by 125. Multiply by 25 plus 49 times x squared, which is x minus 5 over 5, and then plus 25. Okay, great. So we can go ahead and simplify these. That's going to give us a 5 at the bottom, which is nice because that kind of makes a common denominator. And then when you add them up, negative 49x plus 120 plus 49x minus 245 plus, we're going to have to multiply this by 5, 125, and all of that is going to be divided by 5. But what do you notice about this expression that it's independent of x because 49x cancels out and we end up with 120 plus 125, which is 245. Uh-oh, that gave us 245 minus 245 divided by 5, which happens to be 0. Great. That's such a simple answer, right? Great. So let's see how we can do this problem with the third method. Okay. So the third method uses, obviously, something much, much nicer than this. And remember, our goal all the time, we're supposed to evaluate this Cortic. Now, let's go ahead and make a common denominator as before, or just multiply everything by x. I guess this time I could just use common denominator, and then cross multiplication. Let's do it. That's going to be fun. 5x squared plus 5 is just going to be x. And guess what we can do at this point? Square both sides. Why don't we put x on the left? Because uh, it's better this way. So let's go ahead and square both sides. And then from here, we're going to get 25x to the fourth. Notice that we have a 25x to the fourth and we have 5x squared. That's the motivation behind it. By squaring, we're actually getting that term. But not only that, we're getting more terms. Look at this. This is going to be fun. Uh, 2ab is going to give us 50x squared plus 25 equals x squared. And guess what happens? If you subtract x squared from both sides, you get 25x to the fourth plus 49x squared plus 25 equals 0. And that's exactly what we were looking for. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.